In the last video, we looked at a weighted voting system. Uh, and here's an example. So the first number is the quota, and that's the minimum number of votes required to pass a motion. Uh, in this weighted voting system, we have three players. Player one has 15 votes, player two has four votes, and player three has uh, two votes. But if you look closely, you'll notice that, uh, notice how player one has like a lot more votes than the other players but all three players are needed to pass a motion. So uh, let me explain. So for example, like player one by himself does not have enough votes to meet quota. Uh, even though player one and player two combine their votes, they still don't have enough votes, right? Because we get 15 plus four gives me 19, which is not enough. So you need all three players to vote the same way to meet quota. So in essence, even though player one has a lot more votes than say player three, they have the same power because all three players have to vote the same way to um, pass a motion. So essentially a, a voting system like this, where you have these players have these votes, is the same as if all three players had the same number of votes. In other words, they have the same amount of power. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this section. So in this video, uh, we're gonna talk about the Bonds-Off Power Index. So before we talk about the Bonds-Off Power Index, we need to declare or to, you guys need to know some terminology. So for the first terminology that you need to know is a coalition. So a coalition is any set of players who decide to join forces and vote the same way. So for example, let's say player two and player three decide to vote the same way. Um, we would denote that coalition the following way, right? So player two comma player three inside of these braces. We have something called a winning coalition and a losing coalition, and they're kind of self-explanatory. So for example, like uh, player two and player three, that coalition is losing because it doesn't meet quota. So player two and player three would be eight plus four, which does not meet quota, right? 12 is not sufficient. Uh, player one and player two, that coalition does meet quota because we get nine plus eight, which is 17, which meets uh, the minimum number of votes to pass, right? Which is quota. Here's another winning coalition. So player one and player three gives me 13, which meets quota. And then the last winning coalition for this example is the coalition between all three players. Uh, so when we have a coalition of all the players, we say that, so we call that a grand coalition. Okay, so there's another vocab that you need to know. So a critical player. So a critical player is a player or a player is a critical player if the coalition needs that player's votes to win. So for example, let's look at this winning coalition here between players one, two, and three. So this is a winning coalition because all three votes combined gives meets quota, right? So 10 plus six plus four gives me 20, which meets quota. But to determine whether a player is a critical player in a winning coalition, um, you you would uh, then assume that if the player left, if the player was taken out of the coalition, would the coalition still be a winning coalition? So for example, let's say player one with his 10 votes or her 10 votes left, would you still meet, would the remaining coalition or when the, would the remaining players still be a winning coalition? Well, no, right? Because player two and three would only have 10 votes, which doesn't meet quota. So in that sense, we say player one is critical, which uh, in this coalition, player one is a critical player. And we denote critical players with by underlining those players. Player two is not a critical player because if we were to take out player two, the coalition would still be winning, right? So 10 plus four, which are the remaining players votes, does meet quota. Uh, by the same rationale, player three is not a critical player because if we were to take out player three, it would still remain a winning coalition. Here's another winning coalition, player one and two, the coalition between player one and two, which is 10 plus six meets quota. Um, in this example, both player one and player two are critical players because if we were to take player one out, player two, six votes would not meet quota. Uh, 
if we were to take player two out, player one's 10 votes would not meet quota. So in that sense, they're both critical in this winning coalition, which makes them both critical players. And we underline the both of them. So here are all of the winning coalition and all of the critical players in each of the coalitions identified. And what's important uh, with a coalition um, and to determine the you know the bonds off power index is we're going to look at the number of critical uh, counts each of these guys have or the number of times each of the players are critical and we're actually going to look at the ratio of um, of the number of times a player is critical over the total number of times total number of critical counts so there's a couple of uh, I've kind of mentioned a couple of terminology but let me kind of re-explain so here's the same example. So a player's critical count is the number of times that the player is a critical player. So for example, uh, player one's critical count would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six times that the player player one is uh, critical. So player one's critical count is six. And we denote critical counts with the uh, uppercase letter B. So B sub one would be player one's critical count right player two's critical count player three player four's critical count so player four was zero because in none of the winning coalition is player four a critical uh, player and there's one more notation here so capital T is a total number of critical counts and that can be easily found by adding up each of the players or adding up the total number of um, um, critical counts and finally, uh, one last notation actually. So this is the Banzoff power index notation. So beta X, where X is just the number of uh, the player's number, right? So for example, beta sub one would be uh, player one's Banzoff power. And the formula for a Banzoff power index is B sub X divided by T, where B sub X is the player's critical count and T is a total number of critical um, count so for example um, in in this example player one's critical um, or bonds off power would be six divided by ten right six over ten uh, but six over ten we've got to reduce it um, and that reduces to two-thirds so here's everybody's all the players bonds off power so for example player two's bonds off power would be 10 I'm sorry 2 over 10 which reduces to 1 over 5 uh, player 3 same thing player 4 0 over 10 which reduces to 0 so let's recap so here are the steps to computing the bonds off power distribution or to computing a bonds off power distribution so you want to list all the possible winning coalitions and then you want to determine the critical players in each winning coalition by underlining the critical players. You want to find the critical count for each player. And then you want to find the total number of critical counts by adding up all, everybody's, all the players' uh, critical count. And then finally, you want to compute the bonds off power index. So let's go ahead and do this example. So in this example, uh, quota is 11 and we have four players with uh, those voting uh, number of votes so the question here first says write down all the winning coalitions so here's what I recommend when you're listing all the winning coalitions first of all you want to list uh, uh, the winning coalition with two players first and then you want to list the winning coalitions with three players and then four players and then however many um, players there are total right so there's only a possibility of four um, uh, you know four player winning coalition and that's that's the max right so with two players well let's see so player one and player two well if you combine them you get you exceed 11 you meet quota right nine plus eight gives me 17 which meets quota so I know that one winning coalition is p1 p2 and let's see Let's see if there's another one. So, and then you want to go in order, right? You want to see if um, you want to tr compare like P1 and P3. Does that give me a winning coalition? Sure enough, right? So nine plus two gives me eleven. That meets quota. So P1, P3. Oops, try it again. 
And then let's take a look. So what about P1 and P4? So P1 and P4 only gives me 10, which does not meet quota. So that's not a winning coalition. So now let's continue. So what about, now we, we've looked at all the winning coalition with P1. So let's look at uh, the winning coalitions with P2 that doesn't include P1. So for example, like P2 and uh, P3. Um, so that combines to be 10, so that doesn't win. Uh, so definitely P2 and P4 um, doesn't win as well. So that seems to be, this seems to be the only two player coalitions that are winning. So winning coalitions with two players. All right, so now let's look at the three. Let's list the three um, player winning coalitions. So let's start again with player one. So player one, two, and three, that's a winning coalition. So that's P1, P2, P3. Uh, what about P1, P2, and P4? So that's a winning coalition. So P1, P2, and P4. Okay, and anything else? What about P1, P3, and P4? So that is a winning coalition. So P1, P3, and P4. Now you're going to notice that P1 is in a lot of these because Again, player one always has the most amount of votes, and they're usually, um, you know, the most critical. They, they usually have the most critical count be, by by the fact that they have the most votes. Right? Okay, so let's see if there's any other ones because I believe these are the only three um, winning coalition that involves player one. So let's take a look to see if um, there's any other ones. So, for example, like P two. P3, P4, that gives me 11, which meets quota. So that's another one. So that's P2, P3, and P4. And just by looking at it, I believe that's, that's it. So that's it. Uh, so, and now once we're done with the three, now we got to go to the four um, player coalition. And that should be, that's the last one, right? Because you can't have more than. Uh, four players because there's only four players okay so that's the first step uh, the first step is to to list all of the winning coalitions the second step is to calculate the critical count for each player so what do I mean by that well we want to figure out b1 which is the critical count for player one uh, and we want to figure out b2 critical count for player two and then b3 critical count for player three and then B4 which is critical um, count for B4 for player four and we're going to do that by looking at um, the critical players in each of the coalitions right so for example with P1 and P2 that's uh, nine and eight uh, to determine whether P1 is critical we pretend that P1 is gone right so let me highlight just to so you guys can see it so that's the coalition we're looking at right P1 and P2 if we were to um, pretend that uh, player one was, you know, out of the coalition, would that coalition now be winning? Well, no, right? Because we're, eight is not sufficient. So P1 is critical. So we're going to unalign P1 in that coalition. Uh, likewise, uh, if P2 was to be was to leave that coalition, so P2 and his or her, her eight votes was to leave, uh, the nine here would not be sufficient. So P2 is also critical all right so that's that coalition so let's take a look at the second coalition second winning coalition that's p1 uh, and p3 so if p1 was to lose or uh, was to um, um, taken out with the coalition p3 is does not have sufficient votes so that means p1 is critical if p3 was to leave the coalition uh, p1 with their nine votes is not does not meet quota which means p3 is critical in this uh, coalition all right so let's take a look at the next coalition between p1 p2 and p3 okay so if we were to take out if p1 was to leave then the coalition would not be uh, so would not meet quota so that means p1 is critical if p2 was to leave then well, let's see, 9 plus 2. Well, that does meet quota because that's 11. So P2 is not critical. And usually when P2 is not critical, then the next player with a with smaller amount of um, votes 
um, is not critical as well, right? So let's just, just take a look. So if P3 was to leave, 9 plus 8 gives me 17, which does meet quota. So it appears that P1 is the only critical player in that coalition. So let's take a look at this coalition, which involves player 1, player 2, and player 4. Uh, so if uh, P1 was to leave, 9 plus 1, well, that doesn't meet quota, so that tells me that P1 is critical. Uh, if P2 was to leave, then we get 9 plus 1, which is 10, which does not meet quota, which means player 2 is critical. And then if player uh, 4 was to leave with his or her one vote, uh, it would still meet quota. So that tells me that player 4 is not critical in that coalition. All right, so let's look at the next one. So that's going to be the coalition between player 1, player 3, and player 4. Okay, so if we look at that, player 1, if player 1 was to leave, then the coalition would not meet quota. That means player 1 is critical. If player 2 was to leave, then that means that um, the coalition would not meet quota, which means player uh, player 3 is critical. And if player um, 4 was to leave the coalition, then, well, they do meet quota, which means player 4 is not critical. So we're done with that. The next coalition between player 2, player 3, player 4. So player 2, player 3, player 4. <clears throat> player 2 was to leave then we don't meet quota which means player 2 is critical if player 4 3 rather was to leave then we don't meet quota which means player 3 is critical and then if player 4 was to leave the coalition we don't meet quota which means player 4 is critical in that coalition okay and then lastly let's take a look at the last last coalition so if player 1 which is the coalition between all four all right, so if player one was to leave, then uh, we get eight plus two, which is 10 plus one, which is 11, which does meet quota. So player uh, one is not critical. And uh, usually if the, lot, the the biggest player, the player with the most votes is not critical, then the other ones aren't critical. Or actually, uh, not usually, all the time. So all the time, if the, if the player with the most votes doesn't meet quota, everyone else would not meet quota. I'm sorry, would not be critical. Okay, so now let's tally up the critical count for each player. So for player one, player one is critical one, two, three, four, five, five times. <clears throat> player two is critical one, two, three, three times. Player three is critical one, two, three times. And player four is critical one time. Okay, so then uh, in question C, it says to calculate the bonds off power index for each player. Well, to, to calculate that, you also need to know what T is, right? So T is the sum of all of the critical counts. So we have 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, which gives us, well, let's see, 5 plus 3 is 8 plus 3 is 11 plus 1 is 12. All right, so T is 12. Um, so here, player 1. So beta 1 is equal to um, B1, right? B sub 1 divided by T. So that's going to be 5 divided by 12. And we're going to leave it as fractions. So 5 over 12 does not reduce, or it's already reduced in simplest form. So we're just going to leave it as is. Uh, player 2, well, the player 2, let's see, the numerator is 3, the denominator is 12. So numerator is 3, denominator is 12. This is not in reduced form. We have to reduce it. So the common factor between 12 and 3 is 3. So we're going to divide denominator and numerator by 3, and we're going to get 1 over 4, so 1 fourth. B3 is the same as uh, B2, right, for player 2. So the bonds off for player 2 and 3 are the same. So we can just put 1 fourth there. And then... The bonds off power for the fourth player would be 1 over 12. And 1 over 12 is reduced, is, in, is already in simplest form, so we're just going to leave it like that. So these are the bonds off power index for each of the player. All right, so hopefully you guys found that helpful. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please reach out.